there is there is no golden bullet in today's cyber world that one can claim that we are fully secure it is impossible okay. nobody nobody in this world can claim that because uh, there are, are vulnerabilities in every operating system there are vulnerability in all uh, platform there are vulnerability in uh, you know various uh, almost every application and those may be discovered at later stage but yeah. as on today those are vulnerable so uh, india's capability towards securing the cyberspace has definitely enhanced a lot in recent past no doubt because a lot of uh, initiative taken by the government a lot of initiatives taken by agencies and regulators across uh, the country has uh, came out with a lot of uh, you know newer and newer control for securing uh, their sector Welcome to the gist on Strat News Global. Good evening, I'm Surya Gangadharan and this evening we are looking at the controversy surrounding the Covin app. The allegation is that the Covin app security has been compromised and the data of thousands of Indians has been leaked. So is this true if so how and by whom these are some of the questions i have for my guest this evening mr bharat panchal a specialist on cyber security and data sovereignty incidentally mr panchal has been involved with the security of the national payments corporation in the sense that the uh, data on that uh, on that platform remains uh, uh, confidential secret and is not compromised he's also been involved with the broader banking sector in terms of its security mr panchal so my uh, very first inevitable question to you uh, has the data on the covin app been compromised what is your sense well so thank you mr surya for having me on this show and uh, let me express my personal views about uh, the controversy going on for uh, you know uh, last two days about the data breach in covin well uh, initially we, we see the records of the screenshot of some of the data uh, where uh, there is a likelihood of that the data is taken from uh, alleged uh, you know the covin application or covin database where the million of billion of uh, you know records uh, available for those who have taken vaccination in our country well uh, data breach is not uh, one one need to understand the difference between the data breach and the few select records because when data breach happen in such a large amount of data where some somewhere it is available then it is it is not a few records select record just to create a sensation uh, across uh, the uh, the country or across the society but it is large number of data where it is taken out and then commercially it is being sold on dark net and uh, somewhere you know where those who are interested to buy for any kind of uses they may have especially on this data you know couple of uh, you know uh, evidences or couple of uh, uh, analysis what i have seen it is you know the the database is the central database where all this data for uh, in this particular case uh, of uh, those who have taken vaccination is stored in some places however you know there are multiple derived information out of that uh, activity which uh, the government has uh, taken over for last two years for vaccination program people might have stored uh, locally few set of the data because at the primary health center and many places where you know the supervisor or the, those kind of people those who were managing a vaccination program for the government they might have stored few select number of data and possibility is high that that data is leaked out right when it comes to a real data breach i mean we have seen in terms of the merit hotel or in terms of uh, linkedin or target or many such uh, you know big data breach even even india's banking sector also we have seen in you know the few few banks where data were stolen out it was misuse but you know the quantum of data which has been uh, you know taken out is huge huge in in terms of uh, data breach it is not few line so uh, in my my personal opinion it it looks to be very very premature to confirm that uh, data breach has happened in this because when such a big system are in place in india fortunately we are the the biggest country in the world or i would say the most data rich country in the world and we are managing we are managing the, the largest database of 
anywhere in the world because we have 1.3 billion uh, Aadhaar card data. We have similar amount of you know, vaccination and so many government programs going on across the board. Yeah. So we have we have literally handled huge amount of the data and. That is not something kept in, you know, on Excel sheet or scattered way where anybody can come and access it, right? So any database, a lot of security around that, multiple layers of security is added, multiple access control, multiple checks and balance before someone comes and, you know, try to access. So if, if, if really, if really someone can prove that this data has gone out, it is a big, big uh, problem for oral security and oral data sovereignty of the country because that's very, very sensitive data. However, I I tend to believe that it is it is not at all a big data breach. Yes, some information might have leaked out, and as as, as what I have understood uh, from the uh, the boat which uh, the Telegram channel uh, is referred into whole case. You know, uh, it is always possible where you send a query and you get some data. That means you know uh, you are you are getting some select data of select people. Even I can get your mobile number and uh, with, I, I can take you in confidence and I can get, uh, you know, your data using the same methodology where you will share OTP with me and I can get your data for, for that reason. Even that is there with, the, you know, the, even Aadhaar today where you uh, register mobile number, where you, you, you try to access a, your Aadhaar detail, you get OTP, you put it into system and you'll get data. So if, if, if I do data harvesting, uh, for less 10, 15 people, and I say, okay, you give me OTP and I'll get the data uh, and let me see what happens. And I say, oh, I, I got 10, 15 people's data and that's a data breach. No, there, there, is, there is much, much, much big thing to do for data breach and not like this. So who does data breach? This is the work of um, outside agencies. It's the work of uh, uh, intelligence agencies. Is that what you're saying? Well, uh, you know, I mean, leave, leave this particular uh, issue of a data breach of COVID. In general, in general, the data breach is something like, you know, those who wants to uh, gain out of that, like the, the information is a new oil, the data is a new oil. That's what uh, the worldwide order is being seen that people are more concerned about uh, data security worldwide because there are potential chances where your data may be misused or, you know, <clears throat> Using that data, one can, uh, you know, do a business like the classical example of social media today. What they are doing, they are they're selling your information. They are selling your yeah. data. So uh, there are there are multiple use cases which are very very legitimate. Where with your consent, you are sharing data with somebody, and you allow them to process that data for some meaningful information, which may be useful to the business. Right? That is that is a part of the legitimate uh, business. But there are. There are uh, the uh, the flip side or kind of kind of negative side of uh, the business, which is uh, you know called hackers, and their their objective or their motive is to steal the data for some uh, unlawful activities, right? And they sell the data in the dark web. Dark web is something what uh, uh, you know uh, we we are seeing the the internet, which is hardly. 15, 17 percent of real internet remaining yeah. all is in the dark net, which 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 is not uh, easy for uh, common men to access and uh, a lot of uh, not a lot of most of illegitimate activities or illegal activities are being carried out uh, under the dark net where you know those uh, those who are trying to access or uh, trying to get the data Ill illegally then they take the data in the dark web and they try to sell this data and there is a there is always uh, some price tag for the data what you see for example uh, in in banking today uh, there are there are a lot of uh, you know website in dark net uh, they are they are sharing uh, selling those data at a cost uh, i mean if there is a uh, high net into our, uh, uh, income uh, guys uh, account then that price tag would be 100 dollars compared to the normal uh, small person saving account uh, that will be uh, a cost at ten dollars so for every data there is there is a price however in terms of such breach hackers are worldwide worldwide 70 percent of cyber breaches especially data breaches are basically targeting to financial gain and that's where they make money the motive is to you know uh, get the maximum money and that's what we have seen in india also that one of the bank uh, in 2018 uh, they lost 100 crore rupees in data breach uh, in, in pune and uh, few few other things so their objective is to get money out of this that is 
worldwide reports suggest that 70% of uh, such data breach is keeping that in mind. But remaining 30% are very dangerous. Why? Because uh, remaining 30% are, uh, you know, those which are not looking for financial gain, but they want to sabotage, they want to, you know, uh, disturb the country, they want to, dis uh, you know, at, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, uh, destabilize, uh, you know, the nation. And that's where they are using cyberspace for this kind of crime. For example, uh, they they try to hack into their system and they uh, they change uh, you know a lot of parameters of your uh, passwords and all you know. power station, you, you know, mm -hmm. uh, or they can they can uh, uh, they can change uh, the entire routing system of uh, one uh, particular uh, you know sensitive database, or they are also doing a lot of uh, you know uh, for example in in uh, during uh, uh, this uh, pandemic time. In one of the one of the uh, country in Europe, they hacked the entire uh, into entire the uh, national health system, and uh, that was under attack for almost three day three days. Now they didn't get any, any kind of uh, financial gain, but they they tried to disturb the economy. They tried to disturb the country, uh, the uh, you know the kind of uh, uh, health system. Yeah, destabilize. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they, they people paid a huge price mm -hmm. because you know it was uh, it was definitely destabilized. So, Mr. Panchal, Mr. Panchal, you mentioned the dark web. Tell me, is the dark web governed by some entity? Uh, do a lot of people? Um, what is the dark web and who runs it? So, yeah, that's a good question, sir. But, uh, you know, it is very, very difficult to, to answer that really there is a, any governing body. Uh, but, yes, they, they are so much so well coordinated. They are well organized. They are well uh, trusted uh, partners to each other where they are selling anything and everything. And naturally, when uh, we, we have also seen, I mean, let me give a very simple example here. Uh, we have seen, uh, uh, you know, uh, in many, many cities, there's called underworld. There's a people, yeah. uh, there are a set of people, those who are committing crime and all this. But they are not, uh, they are not, uh, you know, kind of, uh, rather I would say they are also well organized. Some similar analogy, if I have to take, that is what is happening in the virtual world, virtual world also, where, People, uh, you know, are they may not have met each other ever in their life, or may not meet ever in life, but they are well coordinated, we are well connected, and it's a it's a matter of trust in in that uh, you know so called dark web also where. They are using, uh, you know, multiple features, multiple, uh, you know, kind of uh, technology. Let's say, for example, for authentication or to get entry inside uh, the dark web. That is also very, very difficult. I mean, you have to cross multiple layer of that to get into that. And after getting into this, uh, the, the exchange of money or exchange of, uh, you know, information, that also happen in very, very discreet way and very, very, you know, secure way. So that is that is not uh, you know uh, uh, something which is regulated by anywhere in the world. It is all about self-regulation. So tell me, uh, can the government monitor the dark web? I'm sure uh, intelligence agencies are doing it. Naturally, that there 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 are uh, there are agencies uh, for sure might be, uh, and must be uh, observing them because uh, it's a, it's a uh, kind of a place where major cyber crime are being discussed being planned and being executed. So naturally that uh, that place uh, need to be monitored and must be monitored uh, or uh, definitely uh, agencies are uh, you know uh, fully aware about all these things. But you know uh, currently there are so many services are available where uh, one can uh, take a threat intelligence where they have uh, you know some people are uh, already there in dark web they are they are trying to get the information and pass on to you know uh, the you know, the industry the the kind of business sector or the government or those who really need information from dark web so uh, they are they are providing on legitimate way so uh, dark web is uh, definitely being monitored by multiple people and multiple agencies so uh, you know there was a time when uh, we kept reading reports about uh, Indian military intelligence or military uh, stations being, uh, you know, penetrated by Chinese uh, uh, cyber uh, hackers and others, you know. Uh, in your, uh, since you're in the field, uh, have these instances come down? What is your reading? Or has it gone in some other direction? Uh, 
I, I I may not be able to comment about the, the military because it's not something in my domain or I am. No, I'm I'm referring to public reports that you know uh, those reports seem to have come down. No, 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 no. I think uh, see uh, the the cyber war is getting more and more intensified nowadays. So uh, there is no reason to believe that such attempt. Uh, by uh, adversaries uh, maybe come down as it is going uh, uh, going uh, towards uh, the upward trend uh, we we uh, uh, we have seen couple of attempt uh, in india also uh, where some of the uh, critical infrastructure power uh, power distribution system uh, and uh, many more were you know trying to uh, attack uh, uh, by the cyber uh, cyber criminals but at the same time uh, you know worldwide also the cyber crime has gone Uh, so much so high i let me give a very very small example see the the cyber space it is so much so evolving every day that ev- in a single day there are new 1 million plus malware virus or trojan are getting you know in- in- injected in the cyber space so there are 1 million newborn baby viruses <laughs> which we need to dealt with now imagine that out of 1 million 99.999% uh, malware no one knows about the behavior of that no one knows that uh, whether it is mutate or when when it can you know uh, create damage uh, to uh, to the environment and forget about that there is no vaccination of that so once they get inside the cyberspace they will start you know uh, doing uh, damage and by the time you come to know damage might have been uh, you know uh, cause a lot uh, uh, i mean and the malware might might have caused a lot of damage to you right so that is very very difficult to predict and they are using this the same uh, you know the kind of uh, modus operandi where uh, you know uh, as i said uh, be it financial sector be it uh, any other sector they are using this kind of technology to enhance uh, the the uh, attack uh, capability mm-hmm. so uh, in your uh, estimation is india more vulnerable today to um, uh, cyber hackers and uh, cyber penetration than perhaps earlier so well uh, i i would uh, i would not say that uh, you know we are uh, more vulnerable or uh, more protected uh, into this time because uh, see the, unlike uh, rest of the risk what we have seen like uh, natural calamities or disaster or uh, you know the uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, normal uh, economical economy based risk there those are very very uh, static and uh, it takes longer period to evolve that risk and eventually uh, hit hit us a hard if that risk is really you know uh, uh, kind of uh, 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 those kind of risk when it is really occurred we, we have some time now in in technology look at the uh, the evolve uh, evolution of technology uh, in last one decade right yeah, yeah, yeah. technology is so much so dynamic i mean every yeah, probably, every yeah. six months every six month you you will get to know a new uh, new operating system or a new handset or new something has come now you have to keep this two thing in mind one uh, risk emanating out of technology is equally dynamic because today a new technology will bring completely new set of risks which is not known to uh, anybody yeah. before this technology is introduced secondly you know you you have inherent risk as i told you that you know every day 1 million malware is coming that means not every every malware on a particular day if you say that on as on today can you quantify the how many malware are you know detected and vaccine yeah. is that i think there is no no such thing is available so that inherent risk will always remain there in the system <laughs> now yes uh, in terms of dealing with this kind of risk technology towards uh, security has also evolved a lot i mean mm-hmm. you know we, we we used to do banking uh, let's say a decade ago and now we are doing uh, banking today i think there's a way dif- way uh, 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 way we are doing currently is completely different right but <laughs> when we are developing a technology let's say, let me give an example of upi upi the security you people i mean i mean the common man uh, just put one pin number and transaction uh, is done it looks very very simple right uh, you scan uh, qr code and your payment is gone but you know the complexity for building a very uh, state of the art or very advanced security 
in in that uh, whole transaction that that is really it is way way behind of anybody's imagination so the technology towards securing our data securing our infrastructure securing our application and overall accessibility has also gone up however there is there is no golden bullet in today's cyber world that one can claim that we are fully secure it is impossible okay. nobody nobody in this world can claim that because uh, there are, are vulnerabilities in every operating system there are vulnerability in all uh, platform there are vulnerability in uh, you know various uh, almost every application and those may be discovered at later stage but yeah. as on today those are vulnerable so uh, india's capability towards securing the cyberspace has definitely enhanced a lot in recent past no doubt because a lot of uh, initiative taken by the government a lot of initiatives taken by agencies and regulators across uh, the country has uh, came out with a lot of uh, you know newer and newer control for securing uh, their sector but yes we need to align with newer threat and accordingly we have to dynamically come with the newer uh, you know control to dealt with those kind of uh, new risk so just to sum up uh, india has a digital stack of its own but the risk but uh, at the rate in which technology is moving and at the rate in which um, cyber criminals are uh, refining their methods and improving their um, uh, tools of penetration uh, nothing really is safe out there in the digital world and your security has to keep evolving and you ha have to always stay on top of your game that's basically what you're telling me exactly because see uh, as, as i told you that security is so much dynamic but but you know one one problem probably uh, you know uh, i i i may uh, further enhance on that part that we as a people we also need to uh, behave very uh, uh, responsibly when we are dealing in the cyberspace you know yeah. we we uh, i mean uh, we definitely uh, uh, we have enhanced our skill and uh, knowledge in terms of using a uh, lot of technology in last one decade thanks to the india stake and uh, the, the digital india movement uh, by the government so we are using the technology but we are aware about the ease and convenience of using the technology we are not aware about the flip side of the technology yeah, so yeah, therefore sure. people need to understand people need to understand about uh, what can go wrong because uh, you know uh, people uh, sharing lot of in, uh, stuff uh, on internet and social media and to to the producer they'll get to they get to know only when damage has happened yeah they careless yeah they careless people are careless yeah need to build uh, uh, bring lot of enhancement uh, you know kind of user awareness uh, uh, among the people but uh, again the the where we started about the data breach uh, i would say i would uh, definitely vouch for one thing that uh, india has a very very strong governance around security and, uh, and especially dealing with uh, advanced uh, platform like you know beat aadhar beat covin beat uh, yeah. payment infrastructure yeah. or beat banking sector or any other sector telecom sector and all uh, naturally uh, it is it is not only in india you know uh, it is happening worldwide even yeah, yeah. Uh, you know the developed uh, countries like uh, europe and america or uh, japan and everywhere this is is bound to happen it is happening right so uh, all we need to see that how fast we can detect there are uh, there are uh, some dubious motive of people to uh, destabilize or disrupt uh, the the system the moment you you detect something similar to that that somebody is trying to uh, touch your database somebody is trying to uh, steal the information from your system then once you detect that motive you need to create your response you need to create your uh, you know kind of uh, uh, what what to say uh, defense mechanism and yeah, acute yeah. defense is very very important in today's time because once you you are uh, you know uh, in the cyber space you have to awake all the time 24 by 7 yeah, and yeah, yeah. also must be in place irrespective it is government or it is you know the yeah. the proper yeah. sector or uh, any 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 uh, part of the industry we have to monitor the cyber space 24 by 7 yeah on that note mr panchal thank you for sharing your insight and perspective and let's hope uh, these uh, data breaches uh, whatever they are 
are minimized and our security remains intact. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Thank you so much. Really pleasure talking to you, sir. That's all we have for you on uh, the gist this evening. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel and do follow us on social media and Twitter. Thank you very much. Good night.